Hello there, friends live on YouTube. This is Marissa Bosley coming from GMC Columbus, and we'll just wait a couple more minutes to see if others join us. Thanks for waiting. We'll be on just in just a second. Hey there, friends online. Uh, Marissa Bosley here. I'll turn around so you can see my face on the top of the computer screen. Hey, my name's Marissa. I'm the director here at Columbus, uh, the campus here. I'm, I'm scared to move our camera because we have a great few presentations for you all um, to teach you more about the FAFSA and help answer your questions. Uh, my teammate, Christy, is sitting here with me in our computer lab and she's ready to answer your questions in the chat or at least share them live for the group so please feel free to go ahead and find that chat function and uh, start chatting with us there i will tell you that um, one of the things that we'll share um, in the end is a, is a cheat sheet we've made that's compiled from just a lot of good information we've heard from the Department of Education and found online, um, and we'd love to share that cheat sheet with you. So uh, feel free to drop your email in the comments section, and then we'll be able to personally send you that, that cheat sheet, and hopefully that could help you. So without further ado, um, if anybody online, I see that there's two or three of you online, if any of you can in the chat, just give me a thumbs up that you can hear and see okay, that would be super awesome. 
um, besides Christy, of course, because she's sitting there. Uh, that'd be great to hear from you and just get some affirmation that you guys are ready to hear about the FAFSA. Or a thumbs up on the, a like on the, on the video. If not, it's okay. We're going to get started either way. <laughs> All righty. I'm going to stop kill rowing on the camera and we'll go over here to get this set up. Hey, anybody that joined, feel free to drop us a hello in the chat and let us know you can hear us okay. All right. So we're going to start with a couple quick videos we found uh, that we, we found pretty helpful that you can easily access yourself um, on a, a website that we'll give you at the end. Um, but these are just some really great, simple videos that I think will help explain the FAFSA probably better than we can. So let's take it away. Excellent. So just a really great overview there for what the FAFSA is and uh, why, it's, why it's important um, for anyone looking to further their education um, at a post-secondary institution, at a college or university, right? So uh, we love that video. Now, some of you that are on may have heard that uh, the 2024-2025 FAFSA has seen some, some pretty significant changes, and, and that's true. And um, seems, and we wanted to go through that with you. This video summarized it pretty well, and we were gonna share this video and then go over our cheat sheet. I think you might be the only one doing that. Oh, that's the wrong video, excuse me. Um, I think it just went forward. There we go. This is the right video. Hi, I'm Taylor, a guidance counselor here to answer your questions and help you on your financial aid journey. Wondering what's changed for the 2024-25 FAFSA form? There are six key changes coming to the FAFSA form and experience for 2024-25. One, a spouse or step-parent may need to participate in your FAFSA form as a contributor. Contributor is a new term being introduced for the 2024-25 FAFSA form, and we'll go into more detail on what that means in our Who is a Contributor on the 2024-25 FAFSA form video. Two, your federal tax information will now be transferred directly from the IRS into the form. 
This information will be used to determine your eligibility for federal student aid and shared with schools and state higher education agencies to prepare financial aid offers. Three, for this transfer to happen, you and your contributors must provide consent and approval on the FAFSA form. This is a new requirement, and if consent and approval aren't provided, you will not be eligible for federal student aid. Even if one of your contributors doesn't have a social security number, didn't file taxes, or filed taxes outside of the U.S., consent and approval are still required. Four, you and your contributors will each need to have your own studentaid.gov account username and password to access and complete the online FAFSA form. Contributors who don't have a social security number can still create a studentaid.gov account to fill out their sections on the FAFSA form. But remember, you must be a U.S. citizen or eligible non-citizen to be eligible for federal student aid. Five, once your FAFSA form has been started, you will now be able to view the status, including contributor progress, in your studentaid.gov account. Finally, when you complete the online FAFSA form, your information can now be sent to more schools with the option to select up to 20 colleges, career schools, or trade schools. If you have more questions about the FAFSA process, visit studentaid.gov. Great. Oops. I don't want to play that, guys. No thanks, Taylor. All right, so we're going to go over this little cheat sheet we made, and I'm going to kind of come off script here a little bit, so... Maybe it'll be a little more exciting for those of that have participated. Hey, friends. Let me set up this thing really quick. Do, 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 do. Ooh, I'm jerking you around. All right. Changing it up, Christy. I'm doing it. <laughs> hey, friends. So some of you, I got, I got two of you online. Appreciate you guys joining. Hopefully, maybe you are you know, maybe young adults or adults looking to return to college. Um, and what we're here to do tonight is just give you a little bit more information about the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. So it's the mechanism by which you apply for federal aid. Um, if that's what you're on here for, you're in the right spot. We'll just take a few more minutes of your time to go over this cheat sheet we have. And if this is something you need help with or want more information on, go ahead and drop us your email in the chat and we'll send you a copy of this. My team and I are here in Columbus, Georgia. We're local to the area. We're passionate to serve the area. And so you can rest assured that dropping your email is not, is not a scam. Um, and we will personally send you this cheat sheet in hopes that it will help you, whether it's for GMC or elsewhere. Um, so if you were on with us, we watched a couple of videos from studentaid.gov. Again, student aid, A-I-D .gov. That's the website where you would initiate and start the, the FAFSA um, and complete it, frankly. Um, that's also a website that has a plethora of information to help you through this process. Now, for this upcoming school year, 2024, 2025, there's been a lot of changes. Um, and so we, we captured those changes here on this, on this succinct cheat sheet. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of confusion out there that's been going around about what has happened. I think you may be my only one. Um, but we have a cheat sheet, so come and get it. Some of the things that have changed is that uh, parents or guardians are now referred to as contributors. We're going to go over what a contributor is in, its, in total. So spouses or step-parents may be... Con may be considered contributors now and may need to participate in the FAFSA. Uh, the federal tax information that you need to provide on your FAFSA uh, will be transferred directly from the IRS back into the FAFSA, and so that's a digital transfer. Uh, there's no longer any mechanism for that manual input. Uh, so that's something that you need to be prepared to do, and you, you sign off and authorize that to happen in the form. So number three is exactly that. Consent and approval are required for the transfer of that information. So these contributors, or typically parents or guardians or spouses, need to uh, 
uh, basically sign the, digitally sign this form to consent to the to the information being pulled over, which is ultimately then how aid is determined, right? <clears throat> Um, students and contributors each need their own studentaid.gov login account. Um, the reason for this is because the student has one unique portion and then unique to the contributor on a separate login is a separate portion. So both parties need different accounts. Um, you know, definitely, and this has been true in years prior, but Certainly now keep your login and remember your studentaid.gov login because you can continuously log back into that system to see the status of your FAFSA, which is something we're going to talk about here quickly, but that's something that's been kind of lagging. Um, so you're going to want to be checking on that FAFSA. Um, and then finally, one update that's pretty cool, some of the updates aren't as great, um, but one update that's really awesome is it used to be 10 schools that you could put on the FAFSA. Now you can put up to 20 different colleges and universities and all the technical schools as well. So 20 colleges and universities, fantastic. So again, <clears throat> this cheat sheet I have is something we made in-house based on all the information that we've received from the Department of Education and, and our own research. We'd love to share it with you. So those of you that are online, thank you for joining. And if you'd like to have a copy of this to help you complete the FAFSA, again, whether you're associated with GMC or not, we'd love to just send this to you. So the second page here <clears throat> is who is a contributor? So this contributor term is, is new to the FAFSA. In years past, I, I really believe it was, you know, parent or guardian is essentially who we were talking about in this case. Um, but the de definition from, the, from studentaid.gov is anyone who is required to provide their consent and approval to have their federal tax information transferred directly from the IRS. So we already mentioned that. Um, contributors can be the student, a spouse, biological parents, step parents, guardians of any sort. Basically how the contributors are determined is by the dependency of the student. So is the, is the student dependent on these individuals? Um, again, think parent, step-parent, guardian perhaps, spouse. The tax filing of the student, right? So how, how was in the previous year that student reported on taxes? Was the student reported as a dependent of someone? Were they reported, reported as an individual? Did they file jointly with their spouse? You can see where all these contributors come in as, as basically parties that are privy to this person's tax status, to the student's tax status. Um, and then finally, the marital student excuse me, marital status of the student. Those are all kind of the factors that determine who is a contributor in this student's life. And the, you know, one thing they did say on, the, on some of these videos, guys, is that being a contributor doesn't mean this person has to commit money to this student's schooling. By no measure is that what it means. It's literally just the mechanism by which the federal government determines how much aid the student is eligible for based on their own financial situation. Um, and so those contributors provide that, that whole picture. So finally here um, on our little cheat sheet, additional fact, uh, excuse me, frequently asked questions and resources. So one thing that's come up quite a bit um, is that this year new to 2024-2025 is child support is reported as, an, as, a, as a financial asset and used during the determination process. Yes, that is true. Uh, so let's say a student is a dependent of a mother who's receiving child support from a you know, former uh, partner, that child support total is included in, in kind of that, that financial picture that will determine um, the award. Uh, the maximum Pell Grant, so right, if some of you may not know this, but Pell Grant is the grant that is given from the free application for federal student aid, the FAFSA. Um, there are other things, there are loans, etc. But the grant is known as the Pell Grant, so it's money granted to you, right? Some of our students get confused on that, but it's just money owed to you, or you know that you don't need to pay it back, like a loan, let's say. So the Pell Grant award for the year is seven thousand three hundred ninety-five dollars. That's the maximum. Um, 
so that's the maximum anyone might receive um, depending on how Uncle Sam, i.e. the federal government, determines their need. And then finally, in what order should this FAFSA be filled out? That's been a top question we've received and we've done some research on, but basically the student should fill their section in first completely. And then at that point on a separate login, like we talked about, that contributor logs into their unique account to finish their part for that student. So that's pretty much it about the FAFSA um, on our cheat sheet here for the few of you that are on. Um, we do have a QR code to some of those videos we watched and just the other great, great information provided by the federal government. Um, I see a couple of you online. I'd really love to hear from you in the chat if you're out there. Um, my name is Marissa and I'm here with Christy. We're from Georgia Military College um, in Columbus, Georgia. And we're just doing this because we'd love to share our information about FAFSA. So whether you're a, a hopeful GMC student or you're just a student seeking more information about the FAFSA, we would love to give you this cheat sheet that we've created um, and any other information you may need. So with that, that's kind of the whole program we have guys on FAFSA and I could talk for another 40 minutes, but nobody wants that. So I'd love to hear your questions if you've got them. A ask anything. Our favorite color, shoot, I don't know. <laughs> I see some of you out there. I'd love to hear from you. All right. Well, we'll stay on a few more minutes. If you've got questions, we are a great resource for you to ask. Let's see. If you, and if you haven't heard about GMC, Georgia Military College. One of our mottos, start here, go anywhere. We're a great place for you to start your education if you're here in Georgia or if you're in Timbuktu joining us, you can join online. We've got a great online college. And Christy, you're it. All right, I'm gonna mute the mic. Hey, E-Man123, we are waiting for people like you to come join us so we can talk about the FAFSA. You got any questions about the, do you know what the FAFSA is? F-A-F-S-A. -S -S Hit me up, bro. What is it? enlightening me you are so funny well we just gave a, a pretty big presentation on it but basically my friend um, the free application for federal student aid um, and it is the mechanism by which you apply for uh, federal aid from Uncle Sam right uh, to go to college right or a university um, so two of the biggest pieces that come out of FAFSA are federal loans, student loans, if you need those, and federal grant money, which is commonly referred to as the Pell Grant, P-E-L-L, -L, Pell Grant. So, you know, if I can entice you with a dollar amount, uh, the maximum Pell Grant that someone might be awarded, and it's all dependent on your own financial situation, but that maximum is $7,395 annually. So there's quite a bit of money out there for uh, students that think that they otherwise couldn't afford school. Um, not to mention, right, scholarships and all the things we do at institutions like Georgia Military College to 
to help students figure out the costs because we're, we're, we're keenly aware that it's expensive. You still there with me, ma'am? You got any other questions about it? Where, where, where do you live? Where are you from? Where do you sit? Thoughts on the current student loan system? Uh, um, <sighs> huh? Yeah, I, you know, I think, I think it's fascinating what's happening at our federal level in terms of loan forgiveness. Um, yeah, I have my own opinions about that. Um, I think the loan system um, can be used for good for a lot of students, and a lot of students do use it well because they they take out precisely what they need. See, our perspective is different too, right? Like, well, our perspective is, is slightly different. We're at a community college here. We're a little more of a more we're a more affordable option on the whole than let's say a Harvard University, right? So the loans that our students take tend to be smaller because their their burden is smaller. Their their the the debt is smaller so so i think a lot of students do it do it well if they need to they take the small amount they need and they work that way and that's kind of our counsel to our students um certainly though we have seen students that just take all the money they can and go live off that and go you know go live a fat life for a couple of years right so the loan system is is complex it's a great question what are what are your thoughts on the current student loan system eman one two three I know there's a lag, so I gotta let you type. But I'll be honest, it's kinda hard. Hey, anybody that's joined, uh, while you're waiting, we're having a, a chat conversation with one of my friends in the chat. He was asking about the current loan system. But if you've just joined and have another question, we'd love you to throw it in the chat. We are yours for the next, you know, 15, 20 minutes if you need us. We were here talking about the FAFSA, the beginning of this conversation, and we'd love to chat. Interesting, my thoughts are the same as yours. Keep on doing the great work. Great, my friend, just tell me, where are you, where are you tuning in from? I'm so glad you, you joined us, seriously. Ohio, wonderful. I used to live in Cleveland, Ohio as a young girl and my dad's whole family's from Cleveland. Um, so very cool, are you, are you in college? Are you pre-college? Where are you in your college journey? Hey, anybody that joined, we're just having a chat conversation with one friend of ours in the chat. If you've got a question, dump it in there and we're all yours. Truly, truly, truly. Or if, you, if you're if you so inclined and you really want some info on FAFSA, no matter where you're sitting, I'm happy to send it to you. Great, great info on FAFSA. We're a small community college in Georgia. We're dialed in well to what you know the Department of Education is putting out on the FAFSA. Um, and so we'd love to help you if that's something you're working on. All righty. How big is the lag? Like five or 10 seconds? Okay, my friends, 
I appreciate those of you that have, that have joined us. It looks like Mr. E-Man may still be with us. Um, I really appreciate you, I truly do. Uh, oh, I came back. Sorry, someone called me and was leaving a voicemail. Um, appreciate you guys jumping on. It's really fantastic to see you all here. Um, we do have lots of information and lots of... It's fine, that doesn't matter, it's fine. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, somebody keeps dialing me like a crazy person. We're happy to help you, whatever you need. If you want to get a hold of us, Christy will drop it in the, that's silly, Christy will drop our email in the chat. Um, Info.col at gmc.edu. If you've got questions for us, even if you're not coming to GMC, no problem. Send, send, send us your questions. We'd love to help you on your journey. Um, and uh, we wish you all the best if you're looking at colleges and universities. It's not an easy process, but there's plenty of us out there that would love to help you. So you guys have a great night. Signing off here.